I'll just turn the book around then when you're done. So we can read it? Yeah, it wasn't, my version of it wasn't that it wasn't a great time, but it's only after you leave that you realise how lucky you were and you, you talk to people who went to, you know, different schools. Because uh, for a lot of people, as you say, school could be a kind of brutal, demonising time. Um, and, you know, I was a fey little boy, had no interest in sports. And, you know, that's not great if you're trying to kind of navigate your way through secondary what, school. What got you through that then, Brian? Um, what got you through? Well, I think because it's a, that school, the school, you know, I fe always felt that I was seen, I always felt that I was heard, I felt safe here. And I think a lot of kids in schools don't feel that. Um, but being back at the school, although it's bigger, you still feel it's got that ethos. Um, and they seem, I mean, you know, what do I know here for afternoon? But they seem like genuinely happy kids, sort of yeah. engaged kids. Sure. Yeah, we saw you having lunch in the dining hall there, very civilised, drinking wine. Yes, there was no wine. There was no wine. Can I just no say there was no wine? <laughs> I can't stress that enough. Was uh, the lunchtime as civilised back when you were attendance? Uh, I can't really remember. In fact, I can't remember whether I ate here or whether I brought sandwiches. Uh, I was a boarder, so I must have eaten here at some stage or I starved for three years. But uh, I have no real recollection of it. And then why, why, why was it important for you to, to come back to, to launch this? Uh, because I think this book is really worthy of note. Uh, Ian Coombs, who was at the school when I was at the school, he's now the headmaster here, and he spent a long time uh, writing this book. And when you look at it, you can see the work he's put into it. And it works on all sorts of levels. It's a big academic book, it's a social history, it's a walk down memory lane. Um, you know, and this school has been around, it's survived for nearly 400 years, which in Ireland is a really, you know, it's a rare thing. Well, school is the oldest in, in Munster and it has never had a history written as such and there's a, you know, great stories to tell and that and again, not all past peoples but the community either have no knowledge of, you know, anything bar the last memory they have of the last 20 years or so. So I thought it was important to put that story of Irish education and so on together because it does chart a lot of the education story in Ireland as well as just the school. <laughs> Because when you're young, what matters? And the odd thing is, everything matters when you're young. When you're a teenager, like you don't have to worry about paying electricity bills or where the next meal is coming from. But as a teenager, life can be so serious. Everything matters so much. You know, oh, she said what? Why did you tell him that? I'm on the team, I'm not on the team. I failed, I passed. It's so, so serious. And if there's any perk to getting older, uh, and there aren't many, uh, one of them is that those serious things, they still happen to you when you're older. Uh, you can still be humiliated, have your heart broken, be embarrassed. But when you're older, while you feel that pain, at least you know you're going to get over it. People are going to forget. And if I could go back and talk to the boy I was shuffling around this place in uniform, that was always either too small or too big, never quite right, um, I would tell him, worry less. Don't worry about things so much. Uh, because it's such a waste of emotional energy, uh, worrying. The other thing I tried to explain to him, at the, you know, at the risk of this turning into a, a low-budget TED talk, is... <laughs> The thing I would try to explain to him is that really, when it boils down to it, all life is, is a series of choices and consequences. And the trick is to think about the consequences before you make the choice. 